Okay, now we're starting. It's recording now. Oh, it's recording. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining this meeting. Uh, for today, uh, I'm gonna introduce uh, Spark, especially for the tutorial. I mean, the assignment four that is mostly for data science using big data, the Spark technology. As you know, Spark has been popular, especially for uh, data analysis and data science. So the content of a slide, I'm going to go over Big Data and Spark course and the RDD, and then Spark uh, the course that included our Spark C course streaming machine learning. And then I'm going to uh, go over cloud computing, and then I'm going to explain the assignments that you need to um, complete. The, as you already know, the, uh, the, when you have a big data, I mean, when you have a large scale data set, uh, there are two issues. One is how to store the, the data. And second one is how to compute that large scale data set. Uh, you already have experience how, how to use that, but uh, you know, Google has had this issue for uh, their business logic. So they uh, built the uh, Google File System GFS to store a large scale data set on uh, the commodity servers that we used to use. So if you go to, I mean, you, you shouldn't know what server the people and company are using, right? That is about $4,000 or sometimes $10,000, but that is still, uh, it's, it's not that expensive comparing to um, the other like uh, supercomputers and others. So it's like commodity servers that you can afford. And also to compute big data, the, you know, Google uh, initiated MapReduce based on uh, the or AI. AI listed, uh, coding has MapReduce function uh, and Google uh, make a copy of it and build MapReduce for our computing uh, those large scale data sets. Yeah, so basically, the, this is uh, uh, distributed parallel computers. That is called the supercomputer. Yeah, so uh, based on that, you know, the the Hadoop uh, Hadoop project has been started, and now uh, we are using Spark as well, right? So again, the definition of big data, we can say this is inexpensive frameworks that can store a large scale data and process it faster in parallel, okay? And the Hadoop is one of the solution for that. And the one thing you have to remember is this is open source and you can use inexpensive uh, commodity servers. So now any people, any uh, small organization can afford supercomputer. So you can build your own business logic and run on supercomputer called the Hadoop. And NoSQL DB is another uh, the solution for big data. Okay, so when you say big data, it's not only data, but also the platform. So for Hadoop, uh, the, the two cores of Hadoop is the HDFS for storage and MapReduce for computation, right? And mostly for data analysis, uh, ecosystem called the Hive and Pig are used, and that is also batch processing because that is uh, to generate uh, MapReduce tasks, right? And as you know, MapReduce, because of an intermediate uh, data set, um, uh, there is a performance issue, plus that is mostly for batch processing. It means that once you have data, you want to analyze it. But you know, there is a need for interactive uh, curing. So the, the Cloudera made it Impala and Hortonworks made a test and IBM provide the big SQL and big shape and Spark has Spark SQL. Yeah. So there was already, I, I mean, there have been already uh, the try uh, to, I mean, for interactive uh, curing because of a batch processing issue. Also, uh, data streaming is another like important uh, the, the business uh, need. So Hadoop 
has a strong Flume, Kafka, and Spark has Spark streaming API uh, to handle uh, streaming data to store and compute almost in real time for your business. Also, to uh, exchange data between RDB and uh, Hadoop HDFS, Scoop, uh, uh, Scoop is the uh, famous Hadoop ecosystem as well. And also, definitely for uh, the, uh, the much faster uh, computation, uh, now the Spark uh, came up as an in-memory processing, and that is actually replacing Hadoop Mavridus. But you shouldn't be confused with the uh, Hadoop HDFS. Uh, HDFS is a file system that can be used to be the Spark. And Spark is a computing engine. Okay. So the Hadoop has been popular in the market already, and many organizations uh, have used it. So they cannot uh, give it up. So the Spark, when Spark came out, um, uh, Spark is actually integrated in the Hadoop cluster. So uh, instead of using, uh, uh, I mean, instead of writing Java code for MapReduce, um, uh, people use HiveOP or Spark uh, using same uh, Hadoop cluster because you already have the uh, servers, right? So this is the diagram that shows nine servers uh, that has a uh, number of Hadoop and ecosystems and Spark all together. And uh, on the top, you see the, uh, the separated server that is for uh, a dashboard, that is for Cloud Data Manager or Envari to watch it, uh, the resources of each server. So let's take a look at Spark Core. As you know, the memory has a limitation, and the, the, your, I, I graded uh, uh, your the, the tutorial, and there's a question, what is the limitation in Hadoop MapReduce, right? So many of you answered uh, well. Like uh, the, if you write a Hadoop Java code in MapReduce, that's really hard. That's not easy. And also, the, it is for batch processing, and it's not interactive. And also, because of the intermediate data that is generated from a map task queue, that should be stored into the uh, hard disk or SSD, and the reducer need to read it. So there's a, a data access uh, issues. I mean, the, it, it has a limitation. It, it, it has a bottleneck. But fortunately, UC Berkeley AmpLab uh, uh, implemented the Spark. There is an in-memory storage. Uh, so intermediate data generated from each stage should be stored into memory. So uh, in theory, the Spark is one, uh, 10 to 100 times faster than um, the Hadoop MapReduce. That's what you know now. And I'm glad many of you answered that question correctly. Um, so the um, so as I said, the, the, the Spark is much faster than uh, Hadoop MapReduce. Uh, besides, it's much easier to write a code. The, if you have experience the writing uh, MapReduce code in Java, you should know how hard it is. And Java is also hard. But uh, if you use Spark uh, using Python or Scala, it is a lot easier. And it, the code is much shorter than um, the Java MapReduce code. And also definitely because of intermediate, intermediate data is stored in memory to be processed, uh, th that is a lot faster and it is almost real-time interactive theory. And also the, it is good for machine learning, especially for the iterative graph algorithm. I mean, iterative algorithm that are used for machine learning. But as I said, you know, the there are many the file system that Spark can use. Initially, Spark has used the Tachyon um, um, the file system, and Hadoop uh, has been too popular. So Spark is actually integrated into Hadoop cluster by using uh, Hadoop file system. Besides, 
Uh, Spark can be integrated into NoSQL DB, such as HBase or Cassandra. And it also uses HiveSQL, and it can use many different file systems, such as uh, Parquet. So Parquet is a very popular uh, column-based uh, file system that you have tested at tutorial one and two. Um, that can improve your performance. And also the cloud computing, such as Bluemix and Data Science Experience, Microsoft Azure, Amazon S3, uh, they all use object storage with a very uh, high speed network to uh, communicate with the uh, computing engine such as Spark. Uh, so mostly, I mean, the cloud computing use object storage as a storage. Okay. Uh, for example, in uh, when, while you are working on tutorial one and two and assignment four, uh, you are going to use the object storage uh, resides at software layer company. Software layer is the system, I, I mean, sister company of IBM, mostly to take care of the storage. So your Spark engine should communicate with the uh, software layer storage with the high speed network. So the, the, I mean, again, the, there are many Spark cores, uh, like a Spark SQL and data frame are for uh, data analysis and sometimes for predictive analysis as well. And for streaming, there is a Spark streaming API. And for machine learning, there is a um, uh, ML Live and ML that I'm going to explain soon. And also for Graph, uh, there is a GraphX. And for R, there is Spark R. Those are based on uh, the RDD, the fundamental storage for Spark, plus the function called the transformation and actions. So to uh, use a Spark cluster, mostly integrated with the Hadoop cluster, uh, definitely you need a client. Uh, the, you can use uh, uh, the shell command. I mean, you, you can use a shell terminal uh, to call a Spark client, or as we have done using uh, data science experience, you can use uh, IPython notebook. Uh, that is called the Jupyter these days. And also there is another notebook called the Zeppelin that is another popular one. And uh, those are two uh, popular uh, notebook, uh, but uh, Zeppelin, uh, mostly that is uh, shown at uh, Hortonworks uh, Spark, not in IBM and Databricks. And for workers, uh, you, you need a Spark executor. That should be run on cluster node. So if you look at the Spark diagram for cluster, uh, Spark driver and client, mostly that is uh, uh, achieved using um, application master of YAN. Um, and also the, there are uh, multiple Spark workers for parallel computing. Okay? Spark workers should have a, uh, a Spark executor and then uh, Spark, Spark workers are monitored by a cluster manager such as Yan. And originally Spark, uh, Spark uh, our resource manager was Mesos, but again, uh, the, the Spark is integrated into Hadoop cluster, so it, it is controlled by Yan. And again, the, the Spark worker can uh, communicate with the uh, many different storages such as a Tachyon, that is the original Spark file system. And its name has been changed this day. They donate in, donate it into um, uh, Apache uh, community and its name is Alex, Alex something, I'm sorry, I forgot, but Tachyon has been changed to new name. And also the Spark can be used with the uh, Hadoop uh, distributed file system, HDFS, also object storage and Amazon S3 and no SQL DB such as HBase or Cassandra. And let's move on RDD. RDD is a rest, uh, resilient distributed data set. That is the fundamental, uh, the core data as a uh, distributed collection of objects. Um, you know, the Hadoop has RDD, uh, no, sorry. Hadoop file system has block, 
uh, block size is mostly uh, 256 megabytes, and the block can be matched with uh, the, the, the RDD partition. And also RDD uh, has many different styles, like for streaming, there is a streaming RDD, for schema, there is a schema LDD that has been changed to data frame. And also there's a pair LDD, but you, you can simply call them LDD, but uh, LDD has been uh, many uh, um, subclass. And also it's immutable. So that's why you need a transformation function. Transformation means uh, whenever the value of LDD is changed, it creates another LDD instead of change the value because LDD is immutable. Also, it has a lineage. It means that uh, there is a, a, the, the history of the object. It means that uh, if LDD1 is converted to LDD2, there is a link between them. And then LDD2 may generate LDD3 that has another link between LDD2 and LDD3. So if LDD3 is gone, uh, you can come back to LDD1 again to uh, compute LDD3. So that is called the lineage. So you can see um, uh, what LDD generate uh, this LDD. Yeah. So transformation, uh, that is to define new LDDs. And it has the laziness. It means that uh, as a human being, you can tell uh, uh, what should be LDD2 generated from LDD1. But before action is called, before action function is called, uh, the value of LDD is not uh, computed yet. Okay? So the famous LDD function, I mean, transformation function is map, filter, join. And also action function, that is to return values and also to compute the value of LDD. Uh, that is count, collect, take, and save but that you have already used for tutorial uh, one and two. And let's move on. Uh, uh, some detail of Spark SQL and streaming and machine learning. And Spark SQL, that is very convenient to, to use because uh, many of you, many of the people are familiar with the, um, the SQL. So once you know SQL, uh, you can easily use Spark SQL. Um, so simply, the, you can even use, you can even call our SQL statement directly from Spark SQL. But these days, uh, 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 the people uh, prefer using data frame. That is to use function instead of their SQL uh, syntax. But the function of a data frame is similar to SQL. So once you know SQL, it's very easy to move it to uh, Spark data frame. Also, Spark streaming, uh, that is for our storing and computing uh, streaming data from uh, servers or from uh, the sensors. So whenever the uh, server and sensor generate data, you can immediately take those data as a streaming data to compute or to store using Spark Streaming API. Uh, and also, the, definitely the predictable analysis is a kind of a, a hot area, so Spark support machine learning library. So initially, the, the it, ha, it uh, uses RDD with the ML Live API, and it provides many algorithm, machine learning algorithms, such as decision tree, uh, regression, and PCA. But, you know, the now nowadays, uh, data frame has been more popular than RDD. I mean, data frame is much easier than RDD to use. So Spark ML uh, came out, and many, I mean, ML has been more popular than uh, ML library. Um, because uh, again, Spark ML uh, use data frame, and data frame is like table. So you can read the data and store, store that data into a data frame. Actually, that is actually table. So once you have a data frame, you can use SQL easily uh, to query the data. Besides, it provides a pipeline. Pipeline is uh, uh, composed. Uh, pipeline is composed of multiple stages. 
I mean multiple tasks. So you can uh, build the uh, uh, machine learning flow, machine learning workflow much easily. So fortunately, our uh, tutorial four, I mean the assignment four has pipelining. Uh, so you can tell, I mean, I'll show you, but you can see how easy, I mean, how um, how well structured uh, the workflow is. Now let's go back to cloud computing. You know, the full Spark, uh, there are many cloud computing that are supported. The first one is definitely by Databricks, that is the founder of Spark. So Databricks use actually Amazon AWS. Um, and provide many uh, latest to uh, the API plus um, uh, good uh, visual uh, visual uh, the function. And Amazon AWS definitely definitely provide its own uh, Spark. So if you uh, sign up Amazon AWS, uh, you can run a Spark service as well. And also Microsoft Azure or uh, or collaborated with Hortonworks to provide the um, Hortonworks HD inside um, the, and its Spark service. And IBM Bluemix and Data Science Experience provide uh, Spark. Um, if you use Bluemix, Bluemix has a big insight that provides Hadoop, Hive, Pig, and Spark, but the Spark at Bluemix uh, doesn't support Jupyter Notebook. But fortunately, we have a data science experience that use um, uh, Spark machine learning library and machine learning, and it provides Jupyter Notebook as well. And also, it uses soft layer storage um, to store data set. And soft layer, again, is a sister company of IBM uh, that provides the storage plus high speed network to um, communicate with this. Spark service. Um, that is uh, that is to achieve data intensive computing for the current big data uh, era. Um, but uh, let me just move on. Uh, that that I, I don't want to uh, go over in detail. So let's think about what you have done for tutorial one and two. Uh, actually, you collect data and you uh, process it, you analyze it using uh, RDD and its uh, transformation and action functions. So uh, the, no matter how, no matter what you recognize it or not, you actually have done data engineering and data analysis jobs at tutorial one and two, because you collect the data and you filter the data using RDD and then you analyze and visualize it, right? So actually, you did great. And also, at tutorial two, uh, at the end, uh, you have seen parquet function, right? You, you write your result into parquet file and save it into uh, object storage of um, um, data science. Uh, uh, actually, the, you, you have seen the question that I'm asking, right? That I said, uh, if you run I mean, if you regenerate the file, uh, you need to rename the file name. It is because the the in Big Data, in Hadoop and Spark, we are talking about write once file system. It means that once you write a file, uh, you cannot update it. You, you actually need to uh, just analyze it. Or if you don't want, you just need to delete all the file. It, so it's not transaction. We are talking about data analysis. So once you create a parquet file, uh, you need to delete or you need to regenerate another parquet file to save the uh, new new file, new I mean new data. Okay. So let's talk about assignment four. Uh, this is actually for uh, predictive analysis. Okay, I, I have a type for here. So predictive analysis. Uh, the, or you can simply call it data science. So this is the uh, very simple uh, approach for predictive analysis or data science uh, to use uh, Spark Machine Learning Library and ML Pipeline. Uh, this is a capital ML. Uh, 
Um, so this is very simple code uh, based on um, the, the data set, H vector CSV data set um, using logistic regression. Um, the, you know, the, the H vector system um, is, uh, has a controller to set up the target temperature and then you can measure the actual temperature. So if you say um, you want to set your building's uh, temperature to 70, but if, um, um, if the actual temperature is a 60, it means that it's cold, right? I mean, we, we can set the label is cold because your target temperature is 70, but your HVAC system, your, your air conditioner set um, the, the actual temperature to 50 or 60, then uh, uh, I, I want to set its level to cold because it is much colder than your target temperature. But if your actual temperature becomes 90 or 100, I can set the level label to hot because the actual temperature is much hotter than uh, your target. So that is just for label uh, to predict uh, the uh, HVAC systems are, are uh, I mean, how your uh, new HVAC system is working. Um, also, uh, there is a pipeline that I'll show you soon. Uh, uh, so this is what I'm talking about. If you look at the HVAC the CSV file, uh, there is a date and also time and then uh, your system ID and system AG, how old your system has been, and the building ID. And then there's a target temperature and actual temperature. So if your system set is target to 66, but actual temperature becomes 58, I would say um, uh, that the label should be cold, cold, cold. And I set its value to zero. If your target is 66, but actual temperature becomes 100. It is hot, and I said it's labeled to one. Um, okay. So for that, actually, the 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 features, the columns that affect your HVAC system could be system ID and system aging. System ID is kind of like a vendor, right? The product, the model lane, model ID, right? So the, as a human being, we know that the system model and the, the age of the system will definitely affect your HVAC system, right? So uh, the features, the system feature that I collect to predict uh, the new systems are target and actual temperature are, are called the system info. And that is a feature that is the collection of a system ID and system agent. Okay, so this, these two columns are used as a feature uh, to predict the actual temperature of uh, your HVAC system. Okay, and then um, I can train my own model based on a uh, register regression algorithm um, using the existing data set. Okay? So you have a, like, uh, for example, 100, 100 uh, existing data set that has target temperature and actual temperature with the system info. Then I can train model to predict uh, the, the actual temperature of a new system because the new system should have system ID and system AG. So um, you can kind of predict what will be actual temperature based on that uh, new system. Okay. Um, the, in, in the real world, in real world, actually, uh, you should have like, a, for example, millions of data sets. Uh, and uh, when you train the model, uh, you need to split your data set into training data set and testing data set because testing data set actually has a actual label. So you can uh, evaluate your model. 
But uh, in our example, we are going to just uh, simply uh, build a model and then uh, we, we enter new data set, I mean, new system information to predict the actual temperature to see how different it is from uh, the, I mean, we, we, we will just see what, what is the prediction. Okay, but in real, uh, once you predict your uh, actual I mean, once you predict the value, you have to compare it with the actual value to see, I mean, to evaluate your model. And let me show you the code. Okay, so once you um, uh, import HVAC machine learning um, IPython notebook from the uh, course website, um, you can open the code, right? And definitely you need to import your uh, hvac.csv file as well. So in the beginning, um, you need to import uh, the, I mean, we are using Python, so we simply call it PySpark. So PySpark has pipeline. And also the, we are gonna use Rose's regression algorithm for classification because we have only value zero and one, right? So there is, uh, Rose's regression is good enough for um, classifying. And also we need to uh, index the features, that are system ID and system AG. So we need a tokenizer and enhancing uh, pump frequency. And also we need the C call. Uh, originally, we have used the ML library, but uh, we can use um, ML with the data frame. Okay. So in the beginning, uh, we have uh, the, the column, I mean, the features, that is building ID, and system import, that is composed of both system and system AG. And the label, that is to show if this system will be um, hotter or colder than the target temperature. So for that, actually, the, you need the parse document uh, function to read the, the input data and then uh, set the label. Uh, and uh, the, the label, um, um, also the, the, this is to, I mean, uh, column four and five are appended together to uh, build a system uh, system info the feature, right? So system info feature is created uh, with this, and then label label is actually the hat column that is shown here, and value six is actually building ID. Okay, so you have a uh, label the document with the three features. And actually this is for, this is actual value plus for prediction. And this is for feature to affect your, uh, the prediction and value. So the, as you did for tutorial tutorials, uh, you actually need to insert the RDD code that are automatically created from here, right? You can insert Spark LDD. And then once you have it, uh, the, once you have a data from the credential, oh, by the way, you, you need to build your own LDD here, right? This is what I built, um, but, but you have to use your own LDD. So between this function and your uh, data filter code, you need to create a shell uh, by inserting uh, Spark LDD code. Okay. So either it automatically generate this. And then uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is, uh, we, since we are gonna use data as an input code, so the data should take LDD data one. So this is the code that I inserted. You can put it in some errors as well. Okay. So this is the only thing that I wrote here and rest of them are uh, written, inserted by um, uh, this function. Okay. So once you read it, you can uh, uh, convert your data set 
into three columns. Your data set to your data set should be converted to three columns from uh, seven columns. That's what uh, um, uh, parse document function is doing. And then lambda function is to read each lines of the CSV file. And then I convert it to data frame because uh, I want to use um, the pipeline. And this is a cell for pipeline. Um, initially, I tokenize system info feature. You know, system info feature is composed of uh, system ID and system AG. Because these two columns actually affect your actual temperature. Okay. So, uh, but this is actually string. So I want to uh, tokenize the system and system uh, AG to two different words. And then uh, I want to call the hashing pump frequency to uh, convert a string to um, um, like a, I mean, this is like a, the tokenizer of system info is actually a uh, string, string feature, but string feature should be converted to um, the integer feature, I mean, number feature, numeric features for our machine learning algorithm. So that's why I need the hashing from frequency. And then I call uh, the classifier, the, the machine learning algorithm. And then I call pipeline to call uh, each workflow. So the, each stage should be, uh, should compose the pipeline. So again, the, if, you, if we use pipeline, that is actually good to structure, I mean, organize the workflow. So each workflow, each stage is executed one by one through pipeline. And then once you have a pipeline, uh, you can call fit function to uh, take training data set, training data set that is actually data frame from input data source. Um, to uh, train your model. Okay. So once you uh, train the model, and if you show it, um, you can see uh, three columns, like a building ID, and then uh, feature that affect the actual label. So label has zero and one, right? So this is the input data that you have, and your model is actually uh, trained based on training input data set. Okay. So once you have the model, uh, you can define, uh, I mean, you can use test the data. So there are like one, two, three, four, five, six, six data, uh, six data as a, you assume the, um, the building ID is one, two, three, four, five, six, and system info, there is system uh, ID and system AG. So I have a six, um, test the data to predict the label. So you, you only see two columns, right? But actually there's a missing label. That is what I need to predict. So I want to uh, use it as a document and convert it to a data frame. And using model, I take a tested data frame that I just created it and call transform to generate prediction. So now, uh, if I uh, call the SQL, I mean, actually, this is data frame. It's like a SQL. Uh, a, uh, this is like a select statement of a SQL. Yeah, so data frame use select function, but that is similar to uh, that is a, uh, um, that is equal to select statement of a SQL. Uh, and you want to only select system info, right? And then prediction that is just generated, that is the column generated from uh, model.transform. That is the predicted uh, label. And then probability that is to show uh, what is, uh, the, how much the 
probability you have to predict uh, the, the actual temperature. Okay? Then, for example, um, system ID20 and its AG25 years should be uh, colder. That is the prediction. So I, I want to predict it as a colder. It means that uh, actual temperature should be much colder than target temperature. Same, system AG, system ID4 and AG15 should be, I'm going to predict it as a colder. But system 16 and I, um, AG9, nine years old, it should be hotter, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, so this is the how you build model and how you predict the label. Yeah. So in in your I mean in your assignment, I ask you to enter a new uh, system here uh, to predict the value. Yeah. So it should be very fun. Um, the uh, fun assignment. Okay, that's pretty much I want to present today. Um, do you have any question at this moment? <laughs>